for revision. Muito obrigado. Dou agora a palavra a... Yes, thank you very much. And I now would like to hand the floor to Vangelis Meimarakis uh, for one and a half minutes. Η Ευρωπαϊκή Κεντρική Τράπεζα από την ίδρυση της... President, since the creation of the ECB to the present day, we've never seen such an unprecedented crisis to deal with uh, economically, politically and socially. And the economies of the Eurozone are hit by this. The European Central Bank has taken action and has got the member states to adapt their policies and there has been an alignment and in terms of the historic uh, extent of the crisis uh, the resilience uh, fund was set up to ensure a recovery in Europe. This was an unprecedented crisis and the ECB acted uh, expertly and quickly with initiatives, uh, Madam Lagarde, that we have welcomed. So liquidity was allowed, was something that could enable uh, member states to help out their economies, in particular SMEs and employment. The pandemic posed enormous challenges for the European Union. It's about uh, digitalization, it's about the green transition, and now the European Central Bank uh, needs to see its role adapted so that it uh, can take on these new challenges. It's not just about a stabilisation instrument, it's about ensuring that the governments in the Eurozone can deal with this epoch-making crisis. Thank you very much, Madam President. Yes, thank you very much. I'd now like to give the floor to Jonas Fernandez. One minute. Gracias. Yes, thank you, President. Thank you, Vice President Dombrovskis, and obviously welcome uh, to the President of the ECB. You said during your presentation that inflation is still too low in the Eurozone, and the Speaker on behalf of the EPP, Marcus Ferber, took that as an argument to ask you not to continue um, complying with the treaties because he was saying that this wasn't showing its fruit, it wasn't being positive, and i.e. that you should throw in uh, the towel and not continue to respect regulations uh, and the treaty. Well, the response of the S&D is just to give you every support and encourage you to do a little more in monetary policy to make sure that we do meet the inflation objective. And the EPP representative talked to te um, technological changes, uh, demographic changes, and uh, that obviously these have an um, uh, impact as well, and that this should lead you to amend and change the inflation objective. But we feel that the path that you're going to be following in the um, strategy to assess the uh, framework should be a different one. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Dou agora a palavra a Luís Garicano. Yes, thank you. I'd now like to hand the floor to uh, Luis Garicano for uh, one minute. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur Dombrovski, Madame Lacarte. Thank you, President. Uh, this weekend, you replied to those who wish to cancel the debt of member states that is held by the ECB. And you have said that that measure would be illegal, and you are quite right. But obviously, there's a weak argument, because if we were to cancel and write off the debt using economic arguments, uh, I would be the first to call for a change to the legal framework. But uh, you're right, it is not legal. Cancelling debt is uh, an account accounting trick. Uh, the benefit of all of this is zero. And it's a, a little game, if you will that could be played but would come at very high cost, at a very high cost for the efficiency of monetary policy. It would undermine the credibility of the ECB, and it would not be good for member states' long-term financing. All of us here give our support to the decisions that you have taken
during the course of the pandemic. And I would like to take this opportunity to renew the support that we uh, have shown you in the past. Thank you. Thank you very much. I give the floor to Franz Jamais for one and a half minutes. President, Ms. Lagarde, thank you very much for the presentation. We're very happy to see that the central bank wants to play its role in supporting the economy, which has been hard hit by COVID, and the possibility for the EU to uh, defend its borders. But the three areas you've talked about, the 2% inflation that you're looking at, we're seeing the gap between the income and uh, the price of housing and other prices would not be a good idea to change the basis for calculating inflation to take account of assets as well. And you've talked about ecological uh, issues such as fighting climate change. Such criteria would mean that the ECB would depend on NGOs who are interested in uh, these kind of subjects. We feared for the NGOs and for you this uh, taxonomy. Would this choice not lead to a situation where the ECB f falls out with its role and ends up with a different dependence? Then you talked about digital currencies. We are all seeing a significant uh, increase in the use of digital currencies over the last while. We're now seeing a higher turnover in the Chinese state, uh, the cryptocurrencies. Would it not be a good idea to take account of this uh, in order to propose to Europeans a stable and credible system once uh, the COVID situation has been sorted out? Thank you. Thank you very much. From Berlin, we'll hear from uh, Sven Giegold. President Lagarde, thank you very much that uh, you are here with us uh, to discuss these issues uh, like every year. We have said that uh, in the framework of its mandate, the ECB has to do everything possible in order to include and, chorus and uh, assess cl climate risks in your work. In your important refinancing operations uh, at the uh, cost of billions and billions of euros, uh, well, they aren't covering those risks. And we have seen that in your other operations uh, that there are uh, companies like Shell, Exxon, Chevron, Total that, um, that have very good notes, that are, are, very ra are rated very well, the uh, rating agencies, and can uh, get hold of fresh money. So please do not be one-sided and uh, only focus on the oligolopies, but try and ensure that long-term climate and environment risks are also included into your long-term operations uh, and also that these be included into your ECB review as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. I give the floor now to Mr. Pink. One minute. Mevrouw Lagarde. Ms. Lagarde, your mandate is price stability, but you keep expanding it. You now see climate as part of your mandate and corona as well. You reacted with a huge buying up program called PEP. But where are we going? Where are we heading? In the meantime, the ECB has increased to 70% of the GDP of the Eurozone, 35% for the US, and 130% in Japan. So an economy with high debt which is stagnating, is that where you're heading? Your motive, as far as I can see, or well, what you should be doing, is to make it possible for member states to repay their debts. That seems to be what you're trying to do, but the bill for that is paid by the small savers, such as in the Netherlands. The problem of the euro system is 
And I'm sorry to have to say it, but the problem is the euro itself. And that is the drama that we're living with in Europe. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Segue-se agora vice-presidente. Thank you very much. Now, Vice President Castaldo. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, President, uh, President Lagarde. Colleagues, 2021, of course, may go down as the year in which the ECB decided to be fully and genuinely a central bank. We've got the lowest rates in history. Uh, banks can rely on negative rate f financing for loans to households, whilst uh, asset uh, price uh, uh, purchase, actually, asset purchases of uh, 1,850 billion euros have counteracted the crisis. I think the ECB monetary strategy dealing with inflation, market stability and climate change and digitalization are now the big challenges uh, to which we expect a response. But we cannot do all this pretend, uh, pretending that we can't see the elephant in the room, which is the huge debt run up by all the member states to deal with the pandemic effects. And over 100 illustrious economists have restated in a letter that we should write off the debt and uh, allow member states the means to rebuild sustainably and inclusively. If not now, then when? Thank you. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. I now give the floor to Evelyn Regner for one minute. Thank you very much. Welcome. The ECB undertook rapid and major efforts to dampen the disastrous effects on our economy by the pandemic. What we see now, the ECB was partially successful. And that said, we're all aware of the impact that monetary policy has on our economic system. Here, I would like to draw the attention on the fact that monetary policy itself is not neutral towards specific issues especially one, gender equality. Now is exactly the time to ensure that women are supported extensively as they are disproportionately are more affected by the crisis than men. And that is why more diversity is essential on the executive floor. We need more women in the ECB's executive board. Having people from different backgrounds leads to a more creative, and to a better way of tackling problems, benefiting our society as a whole. I am convinced that a gender balance board must be possible in the 21st century. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Kalaha, one minute. Uh, President Lagarde, uh, Vice President Dombrovskis, just to say at the outset, I very much welcome this report and I also welcome the rapid response of the ECB in terms of its uh, uh, monetary policy during the pandemic itself and certainly the PEP uh, purchasing program uh, was very, very welcome. It added confidence, I think, uh, to uh, markets across the globe and it certainly added confidence uh, to the Eurozone itself. Of course, there are significant challenges downstream of where we are now, uh, Madam Lagarde, in terms of the public debt that is being piled onto sovereigns across the entire European Union. And that is going to be a significant challenge in the years ahead. So what I'm saying is we do need to ensure that the monetary policy of the ECB mirrors that and hopefully that of member states in terms of their fiscal policy because there will be significant pressures in terms of uh, sovereigns trying to refinance huge sums of public debts in the years ahead if we don't have a seamless uh, unwinding from the emergency purchasing program and also from the European uh, Union, particularly the Growth and Stability Pact, if that is reintroduced. So I'd like that particular issue to be taken on board and looked at. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Beck, one minute. Thank you, President. Madame Lagarde, this report warns against uh, property bubbles and Target 2 risks. Rightly, 
but unfortunately uh, the need, the emergency is greater. The Eurozone is something that the bank has to feed uh, with uh, credits reaching uh, 1.2 billion euros uh, to prop up. So property is going up, wages are going down, only the rich are getting richer. Since 2015 the ECB has pushed for more money than any central bank has ever produced before, but growth is slower than anywhere else. Since Covid the EU economy is shrinking faster than the ECB is printing. And where is the ECB money going? Not into the real economy, private households or future industries, but into sterile uh, assets for the super rich and, and on things like uh, rescuing the climate and uh, migration. Uh, an interest rate is the price of time. Negative interest rates show that Europe has no future left, except as an oligarchy. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Eckhart, one minute. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Thank you very much also for referring to the ECB strategy review and also by including climate change in that. But I would like to pick up where you said that you are going to look at sustainability considerations, how they can also be reflected in the monetary policy instruments, as you said. And I would like to pick on that a bit because I would almost say, what is still the discussion? First of all, some people say, well, the ECB needs to be market neutral. But I can't find that anywhere in the treaty, so market neutrality should not and could not be an argument. Price stability is, and as we see more and more studies, climate change is affecting price stability, so you need to do something about price stability. Furthermore, by continuing the current asset purchasing programs, you are supporting the past, the fossil past, and you're going against climate neutrality, which has a very clear democratic mandate that we have to work towards. So my question is very simple. Are you going to stop buying bonds that perpetrated carbon-intense economic activities? And are you going to embrace proposals for green teltros? Because that is actually required to really have a green agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Henrik Hahn, one minute. Madame Lagarde, Mr. Dombrowski, um, the European Central Bank must. The European Central Bank is obviously going to have to address climate risks and include climate objectives into its policy because we know that price stability is your main objective and climate change has an impact on that. Climate change has a, an influence on the real economy and uh, banks' uh, uh, balances. And uh, so obviously we have to address these issues uh, in order to um, be successful. And the ECB, uh, through its um, obligations, purchase of obligations, is supporting uh, fossil fuel uh, companies, then that obviously runs counter to the Paris Agreement. We have to look at how we can strengthen the role of uh, the euro, be more sovereign in the European Union, and obviously be more independent of global developments. Mrs. Lagarde, I would imagine that very many clever women like you uh, will soon be able to occupy at least half the seats in the um, uh, central banks and also in the uh, supervisory bodies and uh, of your own bank as well. Thank you very much. Claude Gouffer, one minute. Merci, President. Monsieur Vice President, Madame Lagarde, chers collègues, la BCE. President, Vice President, Madame Lagarde, the 
ECB holds m many assets uh, from purchase programs from a carbonized economy. Of, of the 242 uh, billion held by the ECB, 63% are brown, and they only represent 10% of employment uh, uh, and a small percentage of activity in Europe. Madam President, the assets held by the ECB will have a huge impact on the daily lives of citizens. To meet with the current uh, situation, your actions should favour more European employment and less carbon. The real economy uh, needs more than that. Uh, we need to build a more regionalised union of the future, which is fairer and more ecological. You recently announced the creation in your institution of an expertise centre on climate change, and I hope finally that will be an opportunity to act. Hence this question, to paraphrase your interview yesterday, what, when are you finally going to ensure your role and the climate roadmap of the union are made consistent? That's a vital challenge today. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Próxima intervenção de Marie. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Marie Toussaint. One minute. Thank you. Let's be clear. Although your proposals are welcome, they're insufficient because they don't change direction. An ecological crisis, social and economic crisis, all of these are linked. It's a systemic crisis that we're living through, and we've got to do something about it rather than continuing the way we've been doing so far. Part of the public debt should be cancelled in order to promote ecological issues, but you completely toss aside this idea because you say it would be illegal, but then that's not actually in the treaty. And uh, in the name of the market neutrality, you're continuing to invest in uh, fossil fuels, and that's got to stop because every euro invested there is killing the climate. We need to include the climate in the policy of the ECB. That's essential in order to defend the bank against the prudential risks of the climate. If you don't look after the climate, the climate will catch you up. And uh, climate issues should now guide all your action. Thank you.